Good evening, I'm Micah Matera. And I'm Ray Cordofassi. Right now at 9, a shocking discovery in Lake County. A phone call leads authorities to a woman who'd been beaten and tied up at a warehouse. And now a 20-year-old Palatine man is facing several charges. WGN's Mike Lowe is live in Lake Barrington tonight with the latest on this case. Mike. Micah and Ray, authorities here in Lake County are, descri are describing this case as both heinous and terrible. And they say it was only discovered because of a strange phone call. The well-being check was prompted by a telephone call. Authorities say 20-year-old Ryan Storm of Palatine made a strange call to a roommate in the middle of the night. Storm made some allegations that he was stopped by the police, his car was torn apart, and he was going to his workshop on Commercial Avenue in Lake Barrington to fix his car. Storm allegedly went to this Lake Barrington warehouse where he worked. It was about 2 o'clock Wednesday morning. The telephone call didn't sit right with uh, the individual who received it. Um, that person, along with a couple family members, went to go check on Storm's well-being. How many of y'all got friends I will hear you talking crazy on the phone and then show up where you said you was going just to check on you and see if you doing all right. See, this guy would have got away with it if he didn't have such good friends. If he didn't have such good friends, he would have got away with this scot-free. When they arrived at the warehouse, a door was open. They told police they saw a storm run out the back. Then, a shocking discovery. They found a naked woman beaten and bound to a piece of machinery. These individuals found a woman in her 20s, nude, tied up uh, to a piece of heavy equipment. Uh, the woman was battered, uh, and further investigation revealed she was sexually assaulted. The victim, who authorities say had some sort of relationship with Storm about a year ago, was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. This is truly nearly as bad as it gets. Police began an intensive manhunt that included both Lake and McHenry County Sheriff's Departments. At around 8.30 in the morning, Storm was spotted in Fox River Grove, nearly four miles from the location of the alleged attack. Police arrested him there. He was transferred to the Lake County Sheriff's Office and subsequently charged with a number of very serious criminal charges. Storm is now charged with kidnapping, aggravated criminal sexual assault, criminal sexual assault, and criminal sexual abuse. This is like something out of a horror movie. Here, one of you remember the story I did a couple weeks ago about the white guy in Miami who just followed these two random women home and broke into their house and went in their kitchen, found a knife, and then hacked them to death while they slept. And then cut himself by, while he was hacking them to death and then ran to a neighbor's house because he had, all, he had, like, cut his his wrist and he almost he was bleeding out and he ran to a neighbor's house for help and that's how he got caught these this stuff is like a horror movie wow I'm just, I'm just, I like, I just, why make that call? Now, eventually he probably would have gotten caught his DNA was on the woman and all this stuff, but it's just like. And then why do that in the first place? It's like Saul. He's got her tied to a piece of heavy machinery in a dungeon somewhere. Wicked guy right here, man. This is the stuff nightmares. This is the stuff that keeps women up at night. This is the stuff while women go to the bathroom in groups. <laughs> the 
allegations are downright heinous. And we did reach out to the people who own the business here in the warehouse where this all was discovered. And we also reached out to Storm's family. Neither commented for this report tonight. Reporting live tonight in Lake Barrington, Mike Lowe, WGN News. Thank you, Mike. No. Oh, it gets a little better sometimes, and then it's just like a fall off a cliff. The family of Brett Ritchie has been asking questions about why he was killed over a year ago now. They're starting to get some answers finally. Ritchie was killed in Washington Parish last Easter Sunday, a crime the sheriff called a ruthless murder. Now for the first time, we're getting an idea of what happened that afternoon. Our Mike McDaniel caught up with Ritchie's family. With this property, I know you're here. I have That's never fine. been here. I've never been here. This is the first time Kristen Watts has been able to build up the strength to come to this spot in Southeast Washington Parish. It's the spot where her 24-year-old son, Brett Ritchie, was killed. What goes through your mind standing here for the first time? Um, a lot. Just, um, knowing, like, how scared he probably was. It happened last Easter Sunday when Watts says her son, known for his love of video games, was in the wrong place at the wrong time. That place was near his home in Bogalusa. Okay, Bogalusa. Racial makeup of the city, 57.1% white and 41.2% black. So this here be, don't be the melting pot. This ain't no melting pot. This is strictly blacks and whites. And if you're familiar with the channel, if you've been following us for a while, I did a story on a mass shooting there last year. This place is very hood. Very, very hood. With a crime rate of 60 per 1,000 residents, Bogalusa is one of the highest, has one of the highest crime rates in America compared to all communities of all sizes. So, okay, so this is important. It doesn't matter how big the place is. We're talking about LA, New York. If you just take the population of Bogalusa, which is, I think, about 5,000. Their crime rate rivals that of anywhere in the country. There's no place in America that is more dangerous than Bogalus. With a crime rate of 60 per 1,000 residents, Bogalusa has one of the highest crime rates in America compared to all communities of all sizes, from smallest towns to the very largest cities. One's chance of becoming a victim of either violent or property crime is 1 in 17. I think you guys just don't understand how high that is. Like how scary he probably was. It happened last Easter Sunday when Watts says her son, known for his love of video games, was in the wrong place at the wrong time. That place was near his home in Bogalusa. He was just riding his bike. Uh, riding his bike home from a nearby store, Watts says Richie witnessed a car being shot up by who she believes to be gang members. Having witnessed it, Watts says her son was kidnapped, driven to this spot, and shot 11 times. 25-year-old Travion Mark is now charged with his death. Mark, Just think about that. You're riding your bike. Some guys just start shooting a car. You're terrified. You're like crouching down ducking. They shoot up the car. They see you. They then come over to you, force you into the car, drive you somewhere, and put 11 shots in your brain. Now that's the quick version of it, but could you imagine what he was thinking when they were like, get in the car, get in the car, and then they're driving somewhere, and they driving out in this secluded area, and he's like, oh my God. Like he said, how scared he must have been. Oh my God. 
This is a dangerous place, Jack. Just riding his bike. Uh, riding his bike home from a nearby store, Watts says Richie witnessed a car being shot up by who she believes to be gang members. Having witnessed it, Watts says her son was kidnapped, driven to this spot, and shot 11 times. 25-year-old Travion Mark is now charged with his death. Mark has been in the Washington Parish Jail for more than a year now and is set to be in court next month. The chief deputy here says he's not aware of any other suspects in this case, but also not ruling it out. Watts believes more than one person was involved and hopes her son's death shines a light on a problem of violent crime in Bogalusa. You wouldn't think our little town of Bogalusa would have all it has in it, and it does. So Boy, does it. Boy, does it. Boy, does it. Violent crime comparison per 100,000 residents. So the national median is four. Four violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. The state of Louisiana is 5.49, which is elevated. Mostly because of places like this, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Shreveport, a few other cities. But Louisiana as a whole is, has a higher violent crime average than per 100,000 than the nation. But Bogalusa's 12.78 violent crimes per 100,000. The chances of becoming a victim of a violent crime <laughs> just violent. We're not talking about property. We're not talking about anything else. We're just talking about violent crime. Is one in seventy-eight in Bogalusa. In Louisiana, it's one in eight, one hundred and eighty-two. This is him. It says Brett Wayne Ritchie. Ritchie's little sister, Brianna Ritchie, now looks at her arm for a quick reminder of the brother she was so close to. But he was my right hand man, so I had to get on my right hand. <laughs> Holding on to just the memories, though, isn't easy, especially when there were so many more to be made. It would be great if he would be here. That's pretty much all that goes through my head. Is that. Get your hair if cut, he was here, <laughs> he'd do anything for anybody, you know, shirt off his back kind of person, you know. A kind of person um, his family says was loved by so many and taken away from them all. We just miss him. <laughs> we miss him a lot. In Washington Parish, Mike McDaniel, Eyewitness News. The Sheriff's Office hasn't released any details about the case or what investigators believe to be the motive for the shooting. Court documents show Mark faces charges of manslaughter, kidnapping, drug possession, and obstruction of justice.